Okay, so on this video today, we're going to be performing the spirometry experiment using the PowerLab software. And we want to first set the equipment up. We have the PowerLab module, and we're going to co connect it via USB to our laptop. Um, once we do, we can flick the switch in the back. Notice we have two lights right here, and that uh, unit is good to go. Next we have the spirometry pod and um, what we'll want to do is take the connector and connect it into input one. There's only one way it can go. It has this special little notch. When we plug it into input one, we'll take a look and uh, see this green light. So that's getting power. We're good there. Um, next we have the spirometry apparatus and what we'll want to do, notice the air lines has these two connectors. We're just going to gently turn them, push them in and turn them to the right so they lock down on the pod. And we're pretty much good to go with that. And then we're going to take these two uh, pieces of equipment. We got a clean filter, a clean sterile filter. We're going to place it on the end. And then we have a clean mouthpiece. We're going to place it on the end of the filter. And this mouthpiece is the mouthpiece that the patient will be breathing into as uh, we get the readings from the air being pushed down here. It's going to interact with a membrane, uh, which is going to send various pressures to the pod. The pod is going to send that information into the control module. That's going to send it over to uh, our lab station software, where it's going to be interpreted so before we start, we want to uh, zero the apparatus to account for any sort of thermal drift. So this membrane in here is um, very sensitive to changes in temperature. So we want a very accurate reading. So uh, we want to zero it first. And uh, in a minute, I'll bring you over to see the, the computer. It's just kind of hard to do it at the same time. So what we want to do is... Uh, the machine's been warmed up for about 15 minutes, and we're just laying the, the spirometry apparatus right there, uh, not touching it. And we're going to start out by going down here on the screen, you'll see it soon, um, and hitting zero inputs. So uh, we zero the input, and then what we can do is we can apply our little nose clip, kind of breathe a little bit to get used to it and uh, once we do that we can actually start breathing and when you do it you want to keep these air lines up so we're gonna hit start before we even start breathing in it and what we're looking for is uh, a downward deflection when we exhale. And I'm going to hit stop on that right there. And I did notice a downward inflection. And now I'm going to bring you over to um, check this out as I run it so you can see what's going on on the screen. Oh, I'm going to hit start and let it run for um, a few seconds, and then I'm going to put the nose clip on and uh, take a breath. The first thing um, that I'm going to do is I'm going to exhale into the mouthpiece, and uh, this line up here should dip. If it goes up, then we need to um, switch the connectors on the pod, those two air lines that connect into this pod over here or we need to um, reverse the mouthpiece to the other side of the membrane. So let's do that right now.
So keep in mind those were nice relaxed breaths. Um, we're not trying to forcefully um, expire any air. Um, we're just kind of getting this baseline checking it if it's zeroed. So it looks pretty good from here. So let's continue to the next step. So we're going to have to do another calibration procedure. And this um, procedure is the volume correction procedure. And what it does is it corrects for the fact that the uh, expired air is a greater volume than the inspired air. And this is due um, to the fact that when your air, when the air is exhaled out of your lungs, it's had time to warm up to body temperature or close to it. And so it's going to contain more water vapor. And basically in this, we're going to do the same thing that we just did. We're going to zero and then we're going to have the volunteer uh, breathe normally for one minute. And it's basically just so we can have the computer um, get some data that it's actually going to correct for. The other one was was for us. We're um, we're seeing if it would be zeroed, and then um, if the outputs through the exhalation were in the right um, order. Uh, this is actually going to be some data that the the computer is going to use to calibrate itself. So I'm going to breathe into this for one minute, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So after we've captured some initial data, we're going to want to come down and use the range selector tool, which is located right down next to auto scale. We'll use this to bracket some of this initial data that we've collected. And keep in mind, the other side of the bracket is actually off of the screen right now. It's um, towards the left. You can't see it, but we'll want to bracket the data um, for the final calibration. So after you've bracketed the data, you can then come down and you'll see that the calibrate button is now highlighted. Go ahead and press that. The next data set we will be recording is the patient's forced vital capacity. And how we're going to achieve this is we'll have the patient relax and breathe normally for about 20 seconds, at which time they will take the deepest inhale they can, followed by the most forceful and thorough exhale. After that, they will return to normal breathing so I'll proceed by pressing the zero input and then letting the machine run. So don't worry about that. I just wanted to clear out that previous data and give a nice flat line. Right now I'm going to start breathing normally for about 20 seconds with the nose plug applied. And at which time I will then take my deepest inhalation followed by the most thorough exhalation. So coming up shortly, you'll actually see the data go off of the graph right there. Uh, don't worry about this. We're going to adjust the scale so that we can take an accurate measurement of that forced vital capacity and enter it in the table below. Right now, I'm just returning to normal breath. So next, you'll want to adjust the scale on the left-hand side where that little hand icon is. And we need to do this so that we can see the total peak and the total valley of that max inhalation and exhalation. From there, we can use the selector tool uh, right there to get the actual value so we can adjust that by holding on it and moving it around. Um, 
this will give us the exact values so we can enter it into the table and do our calculations. So the first value we want to capture is the max inspiratory flow. And so we're going to use that uh, data selector tool and we're going to move it over to the height of that peak right there uh, the best you can. And then soon we're going to scroll down and get the actual value which is uh, provided to us. So as we scroll down, we can see in the left-hand corner that um, the flow is at 2.84 liters a second. So we're going to want to take that number and place it over into uh, the data box on the right. And so the next thing we want to do is the forced vital capacity, right? So we're going to have to scroll back up here, move this little selector tool, do that back and just eyeball it as best we can. Let's bring it over to about somewhere around there. So when we pan down again, we're going to give, get the uh, peak expiratory flow and we're going to type it into this box. So negative 0.32. So for our next um, calculation, we have the forced vital capacity. So we're going to be looking at the volume channel, that one in the middle that's blue. And um, we want to move the selector so that it comes in line right around here. See this plateau? We're going to put it so we get it at the furthest point before um, this sharp decline, right? So we want to do that, and then we're going to come over here to this uh, marker tool, the M, and we're going to bring it over here, and we want to put it at the kind of the flattest part of this trough right here before um, the curve starts to go back up. So let's go down. We need to enter those values now. So remember, we're looking at, um, we're going to be looking at this volume and this time. So uh, what do we have? Forced vital capacity. Put it over there. And uh, the time delta is change of, remember that. So change in time was about five seconds, close to five seconds. Uh, forced vital capacity, 3.79 liters. So from here, um, we want to, your chart should look like this so far, right? We're going to look at the uh, forced expiratory volume in one second. Okay, so remember this um, FEV sub 1 is the forced expiratory volume in one second. So we're going to go back up to our graph. Right? Um, and we're going to uh, leave the point selector, right? The triangle or the pentagon thing up here. Um, we're going to leave that there, right? But what we want to do and I'm going to have to toggle back and forth, is we want to move this marker um, so it's within one second to the right. Remember, it's the forced volume in one second. So we're going to have to probably toggle it back and forth. So I'm going to just kind of put it right there for right now. Remember, this whole block is, um, see, like 30 to 35. That's five seconds. So I'm going to scroll back down here. So now you're going to want to record this volume of 2.61 liters into the box that says FEV sub 1. So for the next portion of the lab, we're going to be simulating an obstructive condition in the patient, such as bronchitis. And what I've done is I've removed the uh, mouthpiece 
and I have a piece of tape over this and I'm going to poke a few holes with this pen. Over the end and uh, we're going to insert it back into the spirometer and we're going to measure how that affects the flow. Now that the power lab is properly calibrated, I'm going to proceed with the full vital capacity procedure like we did at the starting of the lab. However, it is going to be under the obstructed conditions this time. So remember, it's 20 seconds worth of calm breathing followed by a deep inhalation and the quickest, hardest, most forceful exhalation. I also realize you can't see the flow panel right now. But With the obstructed vital capacity, we're going to redo um, the same procedure as early. So let's start with the peak inspiratory flow. So now you're going to want to make a note of this volume data in your table. So here's a final look at our completed data table.